Welcome to Module 12, Working with Sales Tax. There are a few things you need to know about working with sales tax in QuickBooks. First of all, each county that you deliver items to, you'll have to be charging that particular county's sales tax. So you'll need to know the rate that is charged for your state and also each individual rates that are charged per county. The reason you'll have to know that is because we're going into QuickBooks and we're going to set each of those sales tax items up separately so that you can see them on reports when you go to pay your sales tax. Once we've got them set up separately, we're going to create a sales tax group that will include those individual taxes. The sales tax group is what you will actually pull onto invoices to charge your customers. You also need to think about which customers are taxable. Some customers may be a nonprofit organization where they're tax exempt. You'll want to note that in the customer setup. So let's start off on your home screen and we're going to click on items and services. We're going down to the bottom left side of our screen and we're going to click on item and choose the new option. Remember in QuickBooks when you create a new item you have to tell it what type of item that this is and in this particular case it's a sales tax item. The next thing it asks you to do is give your sales tax item a name. You can call this anything you'd like. We're going to call ours state tax in this particular case. It's usually easier to set up the state tax and then to go back and set up the local option taxes that you would be using. Let's say the tax rate in this particular case is 6% and then it asks you to put in the tax agency. The tax agency is who would you write the check to when you forward these taxes? And let's say in this case it's the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue. Let's click OK and you'll see now that state tax is on our list and you can also see that it's a sales tax item and we're charging 6%. Now let's go set up those additional items that we would need to charge. We're going back to item, new, this will be a sales tax item. Now let's say in this particular case this one is going to be a local option tax. These are usually taxes that the voters vote on at different times. We're going to say that this particular case it's 1% and again the vendor is the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue. Now since I have one more to add I don't want to click OK and then have to come all the way back into a new sales tax item so I'm going to click the next button and notice that it defaults to a sales tax item for me and I can keep going. We'll say in this last one that this is a transportation tax and let's say that the rate for this one is a half a percent and again it's the same tax agency. So now that I have all three of these set up I'm going to click OK and make sure they're all on my list. Now we have not yet set up a sales tax group so let me show you where we stand at the moment. I'm going back to my home screen and I'm going to click on create invoices. This is the field where you would put the particular tax you're going to charge your customer. If you notice in this case here are the three that we set up but none of them are the whole seven and a half percent that we would charge our customer. So the next thing we have to do is go back to our item list and create a sales tax group. A sales tax group will allow us to tell it which items belong in that group. Remember the first thing it asks us is what type of item is this and this is a sales tax group. The next thing we're going to have to tell it is what we'd like to name our group. In this case we're going to name it the Pennsylvania State Tax. You'll notice if you tap down the description is sales tax and we can leave that and tap down to the bottom of the window. This is where you will individually pick the items that belong in this group. You'll see that after I pick all three of the items it does tell me the group rate. This is the rate I will be charging my customer. I'm going to click OK and we're going to notice that the Pennsylvania State Tax Group is now on the list. If you're looking at your invoices this is the actual item from the list you'd want to pick. Notice it charges the customer the correct tax rate. Now going back to our item list let me just mention a couple of quick things. First of all, with any item, remember I mentioned earlier that items can be taxable or not. So let's just say I double click on floor plans. Double clicking is a quick way to get into the edit option. In every item you have a tax field code over on the right where you can specify if this item is taxable or not. 
Remember to make sure that you've done that for each item. Now, one last thing we have to think about. I mentioned earlier that customers are taxable and certain customers are not taxable. It could be that your customer is a nonprofit organization and they're tax exempt. Let's go into our customer list and we're going to randomly pick a customer. We're going to pick Pam Smith in this particular case. When we talked about the customer setup in a previous module, we had talked about the fact that under the additional info tab, there is a whole section for sales tax. This is where you specify if the customer is taxable or not, and this is where you specify which tax the customer gets charged on a regular basis. If the customer has a resale number, you can put it in this field so that you don't have to look for it anytime you need it. We're going to click OK and go back to your home screen. So remember those three things. You need to set up your sales tax rates first, then you need to determine which items are taxable or not, and then which customers are taxable or not. So now that we've done that, we're going to be able to create some invoices, and then we'll be able to pull some reports so that we can pay our sales tax. Thank <laughs> you.